luck. All right. Oh, interesting. We're going to see the same opening that we accidentally observed yesterday while just randomly spectating games. Um, I have had a little time to think about what might be interesting to do in response to this. Uh, but yeah, this will be good fun. Uh, we have a game comment, so let me briefly check what this comment is. <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully he won't nifu this time is his comment. I just wish him good luck. So, yeah, I've briefly thought about this, and my basic reaction to how to address this kind of position is, you know, that's my file. No, that's my file. What are you talking about? So, we're going to have a fun little negotiation here. Um, yeah, they're going to fight us over it, and it'll be good fun. Um, so, a weakness that I've created here... Yeah, and this is kind of similar, not entirely dissimilar, to what happens when we have an interesting central foul rook game. Uh, one weakness is that my silver is not defending my bishop. I could have played this differently and not put the silver in the way of my bishop. So, like, yes, there is a pin here. I'm not sure how much it matters, and that's what we're going to try to figure out. If they push the pawn, if I take, if silver takes, if silver takes, we exchange bishops and they take it by silver, and I don't have a fork at the end of this string of tactics. So how do we adjust for this? Um, well, one notion I had in mind is I could get my king out of here first. And that way if they push and I just take the pawn, okay, we could exchange silvers on my terms here on the 4-4 four, four square. And we could exchange bishops, whatever. And then they have a bishop drop and other stuff gets exchanged, sure. Um, I think that's okay for me. If I get the 5-5 five, five square, and my king is not in the center of the board, I think I'm okay. If that's not the case, then I have to protect my bishop right now, but I think it's fine. I don't see a problem. Uh, yeah, let's get the king out of here, and have a fun game. Alright, so they take a second to defend their king, as I defend mine. Um, we're going to defend these four pawns on this side of the board. At this point, I think I'm safe. I have to be careful about bringing this gold 5-2, because this would allow a silver drop forking my rook and gold. So it's not... I can't do the typical Mino castle thing you would, we would normally do. Um... So, as bishop 5-5 five five is frequently going to be an idea in this position, I should be careful not to immediately tuck my king into the corner. Um, I don't want to play Anaguma Castle. Uh, I prefer to play some other castle here. Anaguma's not bad, but I just don't have time to get into it. Um... So instead, let's put some pressure on this side of the board, denying a future like bishop here, um, but also giving my king somewhere to run in the end game if we need it. Double check our overlay. Overlay looks cool. All right, so they've put a knight into this little shish kebab thing. I don't think that's best. It's aggressive to bring the knight forward. A challenge with bringing forward this knight is that it can't advance a second time without some really interesting stuff happening. Um, hmm.
So I'm debating, do I want to defend this center point with Cozy Castle? To build my castle slightly faster? Or do I have something else in mind? Now, they could actually switch to playing second foul. <laughs> Static Rook, if you will. Um, it's possible. Earlier, I cautioned against bringing the silver up because there could be an exchange, and this exchange could result in a fork. Or rather, bringing the gold up could result in a fork here. I don't see a fork anymore, but uh, this is not super comfortable. Cozy Castle might not be a bad strategy. Oh, there's other ways I could play this, aren't there? Um, hmm. Yeah, we're going to play it this way. I'm not entirely sure what shape I'm building. But I want to be able to react in case they bring the knight out, try to hit this point. And if they bring the knight to the left, it's an easy target there. There was no point in bringing my bishop to the edge because the knight hits it. Again, it's an easy target. Um, so... I don't have an easy attack as Gota here. Okay. Uh, this flies in the face of what I'm trying to do. Um, this is an assertion that he... Well, I should not overreact to it. If I overreact, that's a problem. I don't even need to react to it. I wish there were some clever reaction I could do to like look all cool and smart and stuff, but I don't think there's anything of that sort here. I did mention how the knight moving to the left could potentially be a problem, but now that's not in the cards anymore. Um, maybe they're trying to constrain my knight in the corner. I don't know. Um, hmm. Strange position. It's my fault for allowing it. It's not a bad position, it's just strange. I don't know what to do. There's too many options. Uh, 
Okay, well, I'm going to freestyle this. It's going to be weird. What have I overlooked? So my thought here is I just take the knight. Um, I don't think I missed anything. Still don't think I missed anything. It's interesting, though. I do admit that. Right. Well, I've taken a knight. Um, that's a bit aggressive, isn't it? Well, we have an interesting position on our hands, where I think I've got everything amply defended, and then some. Um, our esteemed opponent might disagree. Yeah, I'm confused. Have I overlooked something here? So now I'm going to try to apply some central foul tactic that I've had happen to me before where my rook just gets ensnared because it's too close to the opposing position. But also I'm defending this knight just in case I missed something. I don't know. I debated, I briefly considered putting the silver up one more square, doing a much more aggressive response. Um... But yeah, so presently I'm up a pawn, and I am up a knight. And yeah, life is good. Um, Let's have some fun. So if they take this pawn, I have a knight drop that hits the rook and hits the center pawn. If they don't take the pawn, I can move my knight. And worst case, I sacrifice the same knight that they sacrificed against me. So now I've got two knights that can both snipe at this 5-7 square. 
right. So they're taking a moment to try to defend their position. Which at least looks plausible that you'd want to do that. Um, there are some problems here, however. So let's have some more fun. I'm up a night. I'm activating my rook. Now this rook is opposing my pawn, but we can also say that the pawn is opposing the rook. What this means is that while they choose whether or not to defend this point a second time, I can bring up another knight to hit this. Or if, I mean, if the rook runs away. Uh, but also I'm considering pushing this pawn and bringing the knight up behind it. So... That might hurt. I mean, yes, I've been looking at the king side, trying to find some target over here. Not really been satisfied with my search for a target there, so... Trying to find an easier target to hit. Um... Yeah, so this target seems pretty easy to hit. And, yes, I could do a more aggressive bringing the silver forward, get it struck by this pawn, and try my luck here. Or I could retreat. Uh, so let's be the coward. Seems like a pragmatic thing to do here, run away. This does continue blocking my bishop, it also blocks my rook. But um, the resulting position looks pretty nice. If they had some strong attack, now would be a good time for it. I think the reality is that they don't have a strong attack here. Uh, Welcome. Many welcomes again. Uh, good to see Shimon. I've actually been watching a number of older videos um, and uh, saw your name as one hoping that all was well in the world. As I still continue to hope. So, um, good to see you. Alright, so I could, like, do something ridiculous and aggressive, and that could be fun. I don't really need to. Um, so... I have too many good moves here to select among. Um, hmm. Trying to find a way to attack with gain of tempo without allowing a counterattack. I don't think things are quite that trivial here. Um,
Yeah. We have 60 second Bioyomi, so I'm carefully contemplating how do I want to really twist the knife at this point. I think this is the best feeling I have here, is that it makes sense to activate my bishop. Acknowledging it might be a while until my rook becomes active. Okay, carefully avoiding Nifu. Oh. Okay, well this is an obvious capture. Because this uh, sacrifice yields no advantage for to the opponent and gives me a free pawn. Um, there's no reason to not take this. Uh, okay, the opponent does get a pawn, and this pawn could be put on the head of my silver. Um, okay, point taken. So they do manage to get some attack out of this. Kudos to the opponent for finding a resource in a lost position. It's not easy to do. So I should avoid exchanging too many pieces. It's okay to exchange some pieces, just don't exchange too many. Because then I lose control of the position. So yes, I will be forced to exchange bishops here. And if I'm greedy, I will be forced to exchange more than that. Um, do I take this other pawn? That would be greedy. No, nah, I don't need to take this other pawn. So yeah, my opponent does get to do this bishop exchange that Oh, I've missed that. All right. Now we have a game on our hands. Uh, interesting play. So yeah, I showed no attacking spirit. So now I am under attack or failure to attack. That's fine. I deserved this. Um, what this means is that in a few moments I'll be forced to select which pieces to exchange. And I need to be careful not to give my opponent a crushing attack.
So the natural reaction here would be to do bishop takes and then try to react to whatever happens next. Uh, problem is, well, actually, I'm, I am well suited against a bishop. And a rook would actually be a useful attacking piece in this position. Not just because I like rooks a lot, but it would be useful here. Um, hmm. But if I exchange bishops, they can bishop drop on the diagonal. It'll be awkward for a couple moves, but on the other side of the attack, I'll emerge far better than if I just give the rook here. Yeah, we'll, again, offer this bishop exchange, but this time on their terms. But my rook will become active, and it will destroy uh, their castle. So this is what I've been evaluating the last couple moves here. So that, yes, they're going to try to get me to offer this rook for bishop exchange for fear of me being in some kind of danger. Um, the reality is that my rook is more powerful than their bishop can ever be. Uh, so we're going to just run away. I know they say don't run from a fork, but that's not a fork. And look at these vulnerabilities on the front side of the castle. This bishop will not be able to attack um, fiercely. I'd consider bringing the rook over here, but now I see that this bishop promotes, becomes a horse, and actually does a decent job defending the castle. So I'm making concession after concession here because I'm not attacking very well. Um, yeah, I didn't think this would be any good. Um, because the castle's right over here. It's an easy target if I choose to go after it. I should. Um, so we're just going to snipe at the point that none of their pieces are set to defend. If they bring the silver over to defend the corner, that's a different matter. But here they're not defending. Um, I mean, yes, this is a fork and my gold general is hanging. But there are other matters to attend to here. Um, do I have mate? I don't have a gold general. This smells like mate. Let's find out. Do I have checkmate? This is probably the wrong way to do it, for me to try to attack like this. Because um, I realize now that my rook moving over could be met by a lance to the rook's face. So my main, my primary idea is not going to work. Um, I had a backup plan, and that's to put the knight here. I still like my backup plan. Let's, I mean, I can continue reading it, but 
We've committed at this point. That's fine. It's a good position. So, yeah. We're giving them more and more pieces to attack us with just to make the game exciting. Um, but I'd read that once the king moves, I can bring the rook over anyway and continue attacking. And they can't just magically defend everything all at once. Okay, that's aggressive. Um, that's aggressive. I didn't consider it. Interesting. We're going to hit the obvious target, get the lance to the face, and the king's defending the lance. The problem with the king defending the lance is that it's only the king defending the lance. Um, It's a bit tricky to read. Okay, I'm going to wimp out. So, yeah, their bishop is taking my stuff. They're threatening to take another general. I can just move, meet that by retreating. I should just meet that by retreating. And unless they have some super powerful counter punch, I'm okay. All right, we're going to offer another general here. They actually have a decently strong attack, because uh, slants can break through, but um, it won't prevail. My rook defends the head. They're all their army sitting back here doing nothing while their king is in an exciting position. I should have pushed earlier to try to win a gold general, but I was thinking that giving them a pawn might be too scary. Well, looks like I've given them more than just a pawn at this point. So. So yeah, next time I get a tempo, we're pushing this token over, forking the rook and gold. And that's going to like force them to attack my knight. Um, that's assuming, of course, that they defend this horse instead of just sacrificing it. They sack the horse, I guess we got to take it and buckle down and like 
defend for a couple moves. But yeah, if they if the horse retreats, then we fork the rook and the gold. And we get one of those pieces. Meanwhile, they do some counterattack on this flank, and we just have to weather it. Another possibility would be to try to hunt down this lance, but there's no point. There's no profit in that. Right. All right, so let's get her over with. They expressed an intent to not Nifu this game. And I see them clutching their pawn. Interesting. Yeah, so I mentioned they're going to chase down my knight because I'm threatening to take all their stuff. Um, so I guess we start by taking, I don't even know, man, like everything's hanging. How do I prioritize capturing all their stuff? I wish there were some magic combination to clean it all up. I guess we'll start by taking this one. And then we could take another general. I mean, yeah, they have an attack going. And that's not fun, but, you know, it's war. Um, Okay, we're going to defend and attack. It looks a bit weird, but I'm concerned about my king's safety just a little bit. I wanted to say that I had time to take this gold and take the silver and just completely ignore what they're doing, but I'm not sure I have that time. So we play this cowardly move. Um, but it does accelerate my attack.
So I guess I've shown several lapses in judgment by not attacking faster, by allowing this fork, by saying, you know, I probably have made, probably need to be a bit, I don't know, more accurate if I don't want games to drag out. Because, um, yeah, so far my moves have not been super accurate. Even the taking of this rook might have been incorrect. Maybe I was supposed to take the gold first and then try to take the rook next. And that doesn't look right, though. But, you know, what I'm concerned is that they'll try some sort of... some way of attacking my king here. Despite the fact that I'm trying to defend, they'll, they'll give it their best. And it is somewhat concerning. Good news for me is that if the slants moves, um, I'll be able to attack the king with my rook from the front. Unfortunately, I won't have a one skip space gap dragon from behind, so yeah, I'm not sure what to do. Yeah, the. Lance takes is very tempting. Uh, I'm not sure it's best. It might be. And against it, I'm not sure if I should do king takes or silver takes. Probably king takes. And then knight drops, silver takes, pawn takes. I don't know. Probably king takes, he says. How convinced am I? Um, I don't know. I do not know. Now that I've played it, I have some regret, because there's one move I didn't think about. But maybe it's fine. Mm, doesn't look fine. That wasn't the move. The knight's the one terrifying piece here. And if they are willing to exchange it, then I'm better off for that. Um, I can't let that knight sit there.
30秒40秒That's incredible. That is a bold move. Doesn't get more bold than that. What in the world are they doing? Sanjuvio. And that's that smells like checkmate. Did I fuck up? It looks like I fucked up. I mean, they don't even have a check. Um, so... Like, I'm surviving this, of course. Somehow, I'd misread that the king retreating this way walks into a mating net. That's not true. Uh, what is true is I can take the gold. Alright. Your turn. Alright, but I... Well... Yeah, no, I have mate in one here. Thanks for the game. Alright, welcome everyone. That was exciting. <laughs> they attacked forcefully throughout the game. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a very forceful attack throughout the entire game. Um, so I will recommend that we um, analyze from the beginning when we do resume. Yeah, I think they got off to a very bad start and um, did well to recover amidst my mistakes, but uh, failed to turn around the result of the game uh, because like, my position was extremely dominant from the opening. Yeah. <laughs> so you broke through with the token and didn't move anything. Yeah, d yes. Yes, the token is the piece that did the breakthrough. And it just sat there forever. Because um, while I might be okay at finding checkmate, finding how to approach a castle that I've not seen before is perhaps something I need to work on. Um, yeah. I, I, so I had the sense that my king was not in danger. I had the sense that, like, even if I give my opponent pieces, I'll be fine. And it started to get a little scary there for a moment. Um, and, yeah, like, there's some serious lapses in judgment on my part, because, like, I could have just pushed that token a lot earlier, won a lot more material, even though I didn't see a mate. And, yeah, instead we had this weird thing happen. Um, <laughs> running a token in the 
face against the Golds and the Rooks. Uh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I mean, that's kind of what encouraged me to find the pawn 3-7 drop in the first place. Is that it was just so, so uh, powerful. Uh, yeah. Yeah. See, I am showing this game on the live stream. Uh, it's something I do with my teaching ladder games to help me and other folks learn this game a bit better. So, uh, that's what we do. Um, yeah. I mean, I got such an overwhelming advantage from the beginning. Okay. Uh, cool. So I think he's going to join us from the live stream. Uh, and he might be joining us in the Twitch chat room. And if he does, I could just maximize the board size. Otherwise, we'll stick with this. Either way is fine with me. I know it's inconvenient if they are, like, having to look at... Either wait for the live stream to catch up with the live board from their perspective. Or if they're trying to negotiate the chat window. Um, yeah. So... Up to their preference. If they want to do chat through the Twitch chat, we can maximize the board for everybody else. If they find that distracting, we'll just do default to how we do things uh, normally. Because uh, it's one thing, like, uh, they can manipulate the pieces over here on 81 Dojo, and but the chat window is over on Twitch, and that can be a bit difficult to follow. So however they want to do it, we can do it. Um, up to you. I wish there were some way that I could just link it all together. Uh, it just doesn't exist. Yeah, uh, that's entirely fine, too. Um, oh, did I break the interface by zooming too many? I apologize. I think I broke my user interface. I hit Control plus one too many times. I'm going to have to be right back on that. I locked my browser. Hit Control plus one too many times. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Be right back in just a second. Oh, crud. Um, sorry. Didn't mean to lock my browser. So, if I could figure out which one of these tabs on 81 Dojo was the main tab, we could get that loaded back up. Control zero over and over to try to like reset zoom. Oh goodness. Um, pardon the interruption. Wow, I've really borked it this time. I don't know how to open Vivaldi browser without opening any web pages. But yeah, here I am repeatedly opening the browser and the page immediately crashes. Okay. So I was able to kill the window. Um I don't know if I have a way to open it with default zoom. Okay, I think I've reset the zoom back. I think we'll be back here. Okay, cool. I just have to be careful to never do that because the entire page crashes. Sorry about that. I just temporarily switch off game invites just to not confuse anyone, and then we'll go find where a Olivendi game was. Uh, here it is. Zoom in once. Do never zoom in twice. It breaks everything. Sorry about that. All right. Um, except, yeah, no, this is the correct game board. This is cool. Uh, you are given sub-host status. Uh, when returning to the 
while you're listening to host positions, you can make moves. And their navigation puts you in local mode. So yeah, when I'm looking at the host position, then I can make moves. But otherwise, I'm in my own analysis mode. But yeah, my board is shared so they can see it. Uh, yeah. Let's see. So uh, I did incidentally see yesterday you were playing a different teaching ladder game where this same opening arose. So that was really cool. Ah, he gave me full host. Cool. Oh, I see. Yeah. I'm not so familiar with subhoused, but it probably works much the same way. Um, let's see. So, yeah. Ah, nice. Yeah, it's been a while. Um... It's a good thing to try, and so since I glanced, I saw this played yesterday, my thought was that I wanted to try to see what would happen in this position, where the bishops are opposed and the rooks are opposed. Because I've played some games, uh, I think Lily and I had some game at one point, um... And I've had games on Shogi Wars and stuff that went kind of similar to this too. Where, like, this kind of craziness evolves one way or another. So, that's a different variation. But I thought, well, surely I could try the same ideas here, absent a better plan. Um, yeah, it looks pretty wild. But... I thought, you know, this looks safer somehow than um, the central file rook stuff. Oh, you've played this a lot on Shogi Wars with this particular configuration. Uh, yeah, I think this third file, well, right hand third file rook, I think is referred to as sleeve rook. Yes, I think, I think that's what people call it. Both players, yeah, need to be accurate. That's for sure. Um, so I was curious. Uh, I didn't back down from the challenge. So here, rather than try to break up the left side of the board, like, okay, yes, I could have defended this, and that might have been a freeing idea. I could have tried to avoid this position in the first place, but I thought it could be interesting to try to aim for um, but since I was here, I decided to, like, push my edge on to give myself room in the endgame. Um, so, yeah, I saw here you did play Knight 3-7. Um, like you said, you've played this a lot on Shogi Wars. Um, I don't know, during the game I had the impression that knight 3-7 was pretty risky because it blocks the rook. Um, but you must have had some successes with it. Uh, it's a new strategy. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so there's a lot of risks and... Yeah. At some point I might have to research how some of the other games have gone. Um, yeah, the, the night jump looks extremely risky, um, seemed, I guess if I were careless and gave away my 5-3 pawn, that might be an issue, but my center pawn looks like I can defend it. It did force me to stop and spend some time evaluating what was going on, that's for sure. Um, ah, oh, the engine says it's okay. Okay. Well, that's encouraging. Wow. I, I'm surprised, but cool. Wow. Uh, so yeah, I play this after much consideration of, like, there's a lot of things I could try, but... The key point is I don't want to give up the 5-3 square. I don't want to give up this pawn. I expect that you're about to embark on some uh, 
extremely risky attack, whether you should or not, whether it's a good timing. That seemed like you were all set up ready to attack right from the opening. Um, so, yeah, there's the knight jump, as predicted. And I don't think the knight jump actually does anything. Um, it would if you had more pieces. And at some point, yeah, you will be getting more pieces. But, like, right now it's... It's very close to being powerful, but right now you don't have a pawn in hand, and I don't see how you get one. Okay. I see. So yeah, the knight advance could be a mistake. Yes, another idea you're mentioning is this silver advance. Hmm. Hmm. Um. That's reasonable. At least in theory. Um, hmm. Yeah, actually, that looks powerful. I had reckoned that in the case where silver's exchange, bishop's exchange, and stuff, I'm still fine, but that's a bit. I don't know, presumptuous on my part. Yeah, I wonder how to meet this. It's not easy. It'd be nice if I could suddenly open an attack on the knight, but it's not so easy to do that here. Um... Well, I guess let's try the most obvious thing first. So, there's two variations here. Yep, bishop takes bishop looks like the natural move. Okay, and then you're going to take this. What about this? So, from move three or something, I've been banking on this sort of idea. That... Um... Hmm. So you're going to block this diagonal. Okay. Um. So if there is a really strong silver drop or a strong bishop drop, then there's stuff to be afraid of. Okay, yeah, that's an interesting thought. If I want a rook, yeah, I should pursue it that way. Um. I'm still concerned about bishop 5-5 five five landing here, although not how, sure how concerned I should be. Yeah, right. So there's that idea. Um, but yeah, the notion that, like, I mean, there's a counterattack here. I guess I could hit back with the silver. Um, okay. Yeah, never mind. On this counterattack, there's nowhere for the bishop to retreat to at this point. So, it's good that I did this bishop exchange first, and then I could do this. Yeah, um... <laughs> Tricky stuff. So what else can we try here, I wonder? I don't know that this immediate silver drop actually does anything. It looks scary, but... Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I could take the rook. They could take my rook. Whatever. Actually, that's pretty good. Yeah. This is even simpler. This exchange. Um, taking advantage of this target. Yeah. So we get a gold and the castle is creaking a bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, they'll have to take a move to try to defend this. And then this knight's still hanging. So, so that's a bit too much. Well, I'm sorry. So that's the sub-variation where they do a silver drop. 
Um, yeah, you were pointing out the main variation would be defending this pawn. I'm not sure that the pawn itself... I mean, yeah, you want to restrain the bishop if you can and stop it from promoting. I'm not sure that it could be stopped from promoting. So just accept it for what it is. And this bishop becomes a horse. And stuff happens. Um, and now some of your other ideas might play in here somehow. I don't know. Um, so that's one way this could have gone. Uh, that I get a horse and uh, the king's a little exposed. Yeah. But I'm not so anxious to promote the bishop right away. I'd rather win the knight completely if I can win it completely. And then just go about my merry way winning the game. Um, but it might not be so easy to do that. Um, so the thought I had in this position was it's a bit crazy because this invites bishop 5 5 drop, uh, but maybe something somehow like this. Maybe not this specifically. I don't know. This knight should be a target. I should have some way to attack it. Um, maybe this. Yeah. Kind of like this position. So, it's true I'm not getting a horse. I'm not promoting my bishop right away. But, you know, this is going to boomerang really quickly. Um, so... You know, silver for the two... No yes, yes, if my idea is to promote my bishop, then I shouldn't do this. So, like, if I really liked that other line where the bishop promotes, then definitely this should not do this, but, like, here... Yeah. Well, I'm not so sure about that. It's an interesting point, but, like, here, I'm winning this knight, and then once I have the knight, you know, I'm going to use it and win more pieces somehow. Ah, uh, but okay. Yeah, I guess maybe you're right. Um, regardless which winning line or which advantageous line I pick. I mean, we're saying this, or some line you are saying earlier looks a bit tricky for Senta. Yeah. Um, regardless which way we choose to go with this. Oh, right, that that silver drop again. Forgot about that one. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, this is better for Senta. Yeah, this is very good for Senta because, like, there's. Uh, it's difficult for Gota to attack. Like, this doesn't force me to do anything irrational. And now just all the pieces are frozen. So my idea of allowing this to promote and just ignoring it is not a good idea. So this means in turn that something like this we've been considering is important. Um, so obviously we're not going to just... Well, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Hmm. So, I could take this reading a little bit further. So now we force this to drop, and we can pick up this pawn. And now there's this again. Except now there's not a silver drop in the way. So I'm learning this opening the hard way, um, but yeah, this looks like Senta survives it. Um, yeah, th oh, depending how severe that attack is, sure, it might just, yeah, I guess that is easier, even though this does yield 
the lance immediately. Um, yeah, so if they take the lance, then this pawn next to the rook hangs. If they take the lance, um, and I guess taking the lance might be best. Because, yeah, we're threatening to hit this bishop, so... Maybe they take a turn to defend the center point. I don't know. Yeah, so they win a pawn. And then we take the lance for free. Have it promoted. Oh, I'm sorry, the knight's still hanging. Um, hmm. So do we want the lance, and do we want to give up the knight? The knight's going to be scary to attack us, so... Uh, what to do? Um, yeah, it's not an easy position. I don't know. I'm not sure how to handle this. Oh, and that's X with check, too. Oh, goodness. There's just no easy answer here for either player, is there? Um... So much to remember. And I keep forgetting it all. But yeah, my instinct of defending the center point was pretty important. Um, seems to be accurate. But yeah, all these tactics are a bit tricky. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Everything's winning after this bishop drop way back here. So, yeah, I was trying to be clever and find some way that Gota at least gets something for this mess, but... Uh, yeah, Gota's... But this bishop drop is just crushing it. Um, so, yeah, this bishop exchange that I offer with my bishop 5-5 five five, uh, is powerful. Now, maybe there's some other way to counter with this bishop 5-5, five five, but in general, this... Um, tends to be something to have to think at least a little bit about. Um, oh! Oh, goodness. You're saying even back here this might be a thing? Um, hmm. Interesting. I'm not... I don't know. I don't know. It might work. I don't know that it's going to be so easy. Um, yeah, but that's kind of actually an important point around defending the king. That might be accurate. Um, hmm. You're right. It's like everything that doesn't involve the king is the same. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that seems accurate. So this bishop drop in the corner is just super awesome after this knight advances. So that's the one of two lines that we could consider. And the other is like this knight takes and bishop's exchange and then the king's exposed and that's not any better. So that's this variation with silver 4 or 5 where that bishop drop in the corner seems to refute it all. Um, yeah. Who'd have thunk? So, let's see. <laughs> it says we were dead even until the third file pawn advanced. So, yeah, what was it at this point? Right. Uh, so the knight jump was... The knight jump didn't lose the game. We'll put it that way. It didn't lose material. It didn't, like, concede anything other than the option of putting the bishop... Or the silver where the knight is. 
Um, Juan 3.5, yeah, the engine disagrees with. Obviously, given the way the game continued, um, we're pretty inclined to agree with the engine on this one. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I guess we play this out a little bit. So the logical, like here, now I've got this pawn that could advance again. And the logical, in some sense, move is to take the pawn back. And now I've taken a knight. And this pawn drop just didn't work the way that you'd hoped it did. During the game, I considered pawn, or silver 4-5, but it was too risky. And I ultimately said, you know, I don't need to do that. But yeah, there's multiple ways I could handle this position safely at this point. Like, I could just stick a knight here and a pawn there and just hole up in the corner. But yeah, what I did, um, yeah, is safer and stronger. And it's a bit motivated by what I've seen in central fall rook positions, where sometimes I got my rook overextended and trapped. Um, I didn't see a way to counter this. So yeah, the rook retreat looks reasonable. And yeah, just Gota is very winning here. With the obvious trap being uh, if this capture, then this. And yeah. Ain't nobody want to defend that. Um, so, um, right. So, understandably, the pawn advance that allowed your silver to take here allowed you to start attacking. And, yeah, I allowed some attacking to happen, but, um, just completely dominated the third file here. And, I mean, I played a number of sketchy moves, I guess, afterward. Like, there were surely better ways to prosecute my advantage than what I did, but um, I was able to convert this. Um, so, yeah, I guess this sleeve rook is dangerous stuff. you got to read positions accurately if you're going to play it. Yeah, so... Here, the obvious thing is just toking over, um, collecting more material. Go back. All right, we'll go back somewhere. Oh, yeah, I mean, sure. That would be fine, too. Um, hmm. Yeah, that would be playable. Um, I guess, yeah, cramping in my rook actually is really terrible, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'd hallucinated a bit and somehow imagined that somehow you if you had certain pieces you might be able to win my bishop or rook so yeah yeah definitely i could well i can trap the rook sure it's better for me to just go after the castle directly but yes either way if i approach rapidly i'm just crushing it here um that was a really nice edge attack that you did here that like, I should have suspected, like, that you're actually doing something over here. And we're able to get a pawn, and then having the pawn, you could exploit this pin, and yeah. Um, now, if I'd, like, suspected at all what was going on, of course I could have prevented this. Well, you'd need more and more pawns to pull off this sort of an attack, but... Yeah, I could have defended better and just made this super unpleasant in addition to being completely winning, but 
Um, but no, you plowed on through, as you should. Um, and yeah, I should have expected this. It's like super dense of me to not expect it. Um, so. Yeah, I don't know where my brain was at here, but, um, and this of course was nice too. Yeah, right, this, you were forced to do this. And, uh, what was it? I was thinking I was going to bring my rook over to the right side of the board to try to mate the king. I was a bit over-optimistic about just how powerful this might be. Um... This was wasting a move. So, yeah, something closer to the king probably would have held up a little bit better. I know you want to attack, but um, there's only so much you can do at this point. Oh, yeah, this fork. Right. Yeah, it's a nice trick. Um, I misread, I thought I had a mate, um, like, even here I was considering, do I just bring the rook over, do I forget the rook, um, because I can see that this horse cannot make it anywhere close to the castle at this point, so I assumed that I had a mate here. And when we got to this position, I couldn't find it. Um, yeah. I mean, I saw the fork, and I'm like, I don't even care. My attack is so strong here. But, yeah, the way I played the attack didn't work. If I did care, I could have stopped this fork pretty easily, but I didn't care. Um... But yeah, I could have, like, I don't know, done any number of things to defend this point. Um. Oh, yeah, right. So, once again, this probably was my strongest play. Um, yeah. And it's probably better to get this fork happening sooner rather than later, but I don't think it works. But uh, yeah, it's, there's no harm in doing this fork. Um, so like, assuming going after material is best, um, assuming somehow that material is what I should be aiming for here, then I should do something about the fork anything at all to i could even drop the rook back in response to the fork but yeah no actually that's fine i could do that but um i'm confused ah <sighs> so I mean, another thing I consider during the game is just offering this exchange here. Which looks kind of crazy until you look at it and you see, well, I'm threatening to promote my rook. And I could still go back and win this other rook. And having a bishop in hand would be kind of nice. But giving a rook is something that concerned me a lot because my position is vulnerable to a rook drop. Um... So, yeah, I couldn't quite do that, although I did consider it. Um, yeah, I wonder... No, I can't outright trap the horse, which would be fun if I could, but I can't. Um, hmm. Yeah, actually, this, so there are things I can do to defend this point. And it's all unpleasant, but... You know, maybe it would be best to just take a tempo, defend this somehow. I don't know. It's kind of miserable to de keep defending this way. It'd be better if I could trap the horse while defending. Maybe I can. 
So let's say I walk into this other fork. Um, but then I try to like trap the horse. I wonder how this plays out. Yeah, so you could take these generals close to my... Or, I'm sorry, you could take one of these things first. Okay, yeah, exchange the horse for two generals. That seems reasonable. Plus, I'm, yeah, you still have an attack going on here. And so, yeah, I would need to find a strong attack. Because I can't defend anymore, because I've given away my generals. Okay, this is trying to trap the horse gets me in trouble. Um, yeah, winning material is always an option. Yeah, I guess that's my best option is just allow the damn fork. Um, I don't even know. I don't know. Just... Yeah, your king is just barely solid enough that it's okay to go for this material grab. Um, hmm. And I guess against this I should move the rook away, but this drops the gold. I don't know. If I try something more greedy, trying to hold on to the rook, that's not smart. Losing the gold isn't smart here, but I mean, I could take the rook. Um, I'm not even sure which. I, no, it's got to be taking this rook at this point. And then what? That's my problem. So we take here. Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess this is good for Gota due to having so much material. I got greedy. I wanted better than this. I wanted better, but... It's not possible for me to get better than this, and this is quite good. This is very good. Yeah, so there's just no stopping the attack at this point. Meanwhile, yeah, I've given this rook. I wanted mate. This does eventually mate, but I got greedy. I got impatient. Um, yeah, now this would have been reasonable. Somehow I imagine this bishop taking both the rook and this gold at the same time. Or something like that. And I just wasn't super happy with my attack. If, uh, let's suppose... If they take this, so now they're threatening that, um, but I can defend. Yeah. Yeah, I had a comfortable advantage either way. Um, so the key is, like, here, I play, as I played the game, just drop the gold back. And the bishop can't do anything, and then eventually break through with some winning attack. So, yeah, I was quick to criticize this horse move, because I thought I had mate. And, like, it's not fair. Between all the stuff, there should be a mate, but there's not. It should be easier than I made it. But, you know, we explore things the difficult way, I guess. Yeah, it makes sense to... I don't even know what makes sense at this point. Um, I can't criticize the moves, though. Yeah, I did consider taking the uh, lance. 
because I might even have mate this way. If I couldn't find a mate, there might be one. Um, so, I mean, after something like this, I could even still consider that. Or yeah, Lance drop too, sure. Um, yeah, I think the threat make gets even, uh, seems to be a stronger threat once I have a gold in hand. Um, right. But yeah, it's, it's not so easy for this king. Um, yeah, maybe the Lance drop is best. Um, forcing the king over. I just couldn't find a mate here. Uh, as many threats as I did have, mate didn't seem to be one of the threats. Okay, so this is a different way I could win that rook. Sure. Actually, yeah, that would prevent the king from escaping backward. I just don't think a silver unaided could checkmate in the center of the board. So, yeah, it would be a stronger threat if I had more pieces, and I just don't. Um, hmm. I mean, we could look, but yeah, there's a couple ways this king can move. And, yeah, I just... I don't really know what could be done here. Right, so here's the threat to win the rook. Um, and, yeah. Gota gets to play, or Senta gets to play moves also. So... Chasing the king around doesn't actually checkmate it. It's not trivial to mate. Um, so this is just, if you get a little bit reckless, this sort of thing might happen. There might be a mate somewhere in there. Um, not really, we're seeing arrows. People really want to continue looking at this. I don't understand. Like, there's... I think this might be a good sacrifice, but you probably need to follow it up by winning some material um, so that this attack can continue somehow. Um, yeah. As fun as it is to check the king around, I need another couple pieces to actually deliver mate here. Yeah, I don't think the pawn push does anything in this situation either. Consult your engine if you're really convinced that, like, somehow this mates, but I was not convinced. So I played the rook back, giving up this gold general, and then I kicked the horse. And, like, still I'm comfortably winning, but it's getting less and less comfortable each time. Like, here I finally do push the token and I should have done forever ago. And, yeah, this reply is forced. Just, I have, once I get this rook or gold or something, then this king needs a way to escape, so the knight has to die. And the point I'm trying to drive at is, I was perhaps impatient sacrificing this lance right away. That, like, this is an option. Um... And they'd have to defend this point. Or maybe they could actually take this gold. I don't know. It felt like they'd have to defend. Because after this king runs over, um, I can continue attacking. And it's not so obvious how Gota defends this. Or I could be confused. Um, so they gotta pick something to defend with, I guess, silver? 
Um, and then feels like this is just a nice way to continue. And like this just looks completely overbearing. Yeah, now we're gonna. Oh, well, okay. This might have some merit. There might be some point to this. If. Mm, I don't think so. This really doesn't look right. Um, but, you know, if it mates, then it mates, but I don't think it looks right. So now what? I don't think this quite cuts it. This is why we approach the king before sacking all our pieces. Um, I don't think this quite works. Because, like, the king can escape this way. I mean, the rook's over here, but, you know, you start putting down more pieces. Um, so, yeah, usually we don't sack the pieces until it's the right moment to trade them. But, here we can just keep adding more and more pieces to the attack. But now you raise a good point that they could keep adding defenders too. Um, but yeah, this attack is just going to yield a thousand pieces here. So it's a crushing attack. Yeah, the king would very much like to escape this way. Yeah. Doesn't look easy to defend. Maybe pushing... I would think you'd want to push one of these two pawns to try to get the king out through the front somehow. Um, but, yeah, it looks rough. I guess the advantage of pushing this is that now if I do this thing, um, I don't even know. Oh, that's an interesting point here. Yeah, maybe I do have mate. Um, no, I don't know. I think I'm still one piece shy. Wait, no, I, I miscounted my mistake. Duh. All right, that's, yeah. Uh, so the pawn can't be pushed here. So yeah, you have to defend this with another piece. Which is another thing you can't, another piece that you couldn't use for an attack because you have to defend with it. So, you'd either be pushing one of these pieces or adding the gold, but regardless how you do it, um, yeah, uh, I guess my contention here is this used to be defending over this way, so now I can attack on this front. Um, yeah, this, obviously this is lost for Senta, there's just no saving this. Um, so my, the way I played this attack of mine, even if I was, if I was correct, and maybe I'm not, um, the way I played this is just wrong. I had a much more convincing attack than what I did. Um, so this goes to the point that, like, even though that's a threat, this threat, um, the king is, ex uh... Yeah, I'm coasting to victory, so uh, if you take a tempo to actually defend this, then, you know, I take a tempo to do something over here, too. And, I mean, yeah, this you did gain some time. Um, I'm sorry, you gained a pawn here, and I guess my gold is actually prone to attack there, too. Um, yeah, so if I'm trying to, like, find some safe solution for myself here, it's probably just back up the gold, and now that my rook's not hanging anymore. And it's, I guess this is kind of sort of what I had in mind. Right. Yeah, so this is what I was concerned about. And ultimately why I panicked and moved the rook to the center file. Uh, well, actually, yeah, I did it in the game in response to the same move. So it wasn't panicking. It was a reasonable response. 
Oh, but yeah, actually I'm losing a lance here. Yes, okay. This active horse. It's a good idea. This fork allows you to drive an initiative. And, okay, yeah, I can counter this silver. That's a fair point. Um, so, yeah. It's a little bit less and less of a coast. And you're right, you do have to play actively here. Huh. So, yeah, that could have been interesting. Um, so that refutes my idea that I don't have to worry about the fork for this reason. There could be a different reason I might not have to worry about the fork, and that different reason would be similar, but, you know, um, I think you just take the rook here, though. I don't actually have mate, because in the line where I brought the rook over, even that wasn't going to mate. It was just going to win all the pieces and then mate. Uh, this knight drop is not crushing either. So this lance drop is ill-motivated. And yeah, just a number of things I did were kind of questionable around here. So maybe this would have been the better way for me to do this position. Just give the rook from the outset build an initiative right away and assert that I ain't afraid of no rook. Especially because I'm about to get a rook too. This probably would have been my best way to approach this. Oh, alright. Thanks for the game. Yeah, it was a good game. Uh, best of luck, uh, future weeks in the teaching ladder. Cool. Uh, yeah. As for the rest of us, do I have any fun other points to raise? I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, there was all those other lines. We were looking at, I was pointing out how this pawn over here during the game was something I was concerned about, so I did this drop. And then this knight drop was not what I was worried about. It was this pawn drop during the game that concerned me. And I hadn't read this. I'm like I'm better in all lines, but this is probably the most testing line, but I don't know how it goes. Um regardless, yeah, this pawn drop. The main line I've been looking at here was king takes, and so I was glad to see king takes. Um, it's uh, like I'm winning in every line, but king takes seems to be, I don't know. I was more concerned about something like this. But, you know, my own sense of judgment is kind of weird in these positions. I thought this was mate. Um, but now if I chase the king back into the corner, we get a position that's not too dissimilar to what we were looking at a minute ago. Uh, they can't pawn drop, but they can still put other stuff in the way. Um, and it's not clear how I win that. So this check right there was stupid. Um, and I probably have lots of better moves here than that one. So I think the most obvious better move would just be take this and say they do something like this. Um, knife check and mate. So they can't just snap this pawn. So yeah, I think this would have been best. And I don't think they have a wing attack there. Uh, one other thing that was maybe of some interest, although during the game I was not super aware of it. Um, when was it that this pawn disappeared? Here. This is when the pawn disappeared. They blocked with a lance, which is aggressive for sure. Um, at some point they could have tossed this in too. This could have been fun. 
And the thinking here is that, okay, yeah, my king is a bit exposed in the center. But now, I'm not sure that the castle um, defends itself very well. So, yeah, maybe it's interesting here. Um, probably not. It's probably not of much interest. But, um, yeah, with... How does that compare to the actual game, I wonder? Oh, dear. Um, yeah, what if they just gone for it? Like, I was a bit concerned about this. How is it that, like, my level of concern is so different. So, like, this is not check. Um, it does threaten to put down another general, but here this would not be check. So they'd have to sacrifice the silver one square over because they'd not previously dropped the pawn and drew it my king over here. And here, I mean, I was a little concerned, but my king can run. Whereas this other sideline, um, like they don't have to take this gold right away. They could have done this. I guess I could have run. And, you know, maybe this could have been interesting in its own special way. Um, I'm probably fine here too, but I would be a bit concerned. Um, so... Yeah, maybe running this way is not smart. Maybe I have to run this way instead. But then we got stuff like um, this to contend with. Maybe? I don't know. Or, I'm sorry, this... Yeah, more accurately this. So, yeah, this pawn drop could have been scary. Um, maybe would have forced me to respond by moving the knight out of the way. And... Um, you know, maybe they still have something of an attack here. I don't know. But yeah, from beginning to end, we had a very sharp game where bishops and rooks were on open lines, except to the extent that I blocked my bishop and my rook. Um, but yeah, this was a cautious move. Um, and perhaps in the future I, I need to study this a bit more. I don't know. This right-hand third file rook stuff is sharp, so we need to handle it with care. Um, yeah, it's an interesting and exciting game. And it's just unfortunate for them that the move they came up with during the game, advancing this pawn, doesn't quite cut it. it rather, it gives me control of the file unless they choose to give up the knight. And once they've given up the knight, my position's just much better. So, yeah, that's just how it evaluates. I didn't see this pawn drop, or rather, I don't know. I did briefly consider it, and there were various ways I could respond to it when we looked at some of them, but, um, yeah. Regardless... Yeah, I guess how I played this, uh, with this exchange and then this blocking the diagonal seemed reasonable and seems to work. So, yeah, the engine, um, criticizes this pawn 3-5 move. In some central file rook games, I've done a similar advance on other files, maybe even the center file, I don't remember, but, uh, it's premature here. You need to have a pawn in hand, at least, for such an attack to somehow accidentally prevail. So I guess there's nothing wrong with moving the knight out twice, but it doesn't... Especially if I'm defending the center, there's not a need to push this so aggressively. I expected something here, or maybe something there, I don't know, something calmer. And we didn't get it. Um, Instead, we got the sharp line that's in the game. So I know my opponent's going to do a little bit more research, and hopefully that'll motivate me to do some more work on this. We'll see. 
It's an exciting game. I hope we all enjoyed that.